Donald Trump campaigned for president as the tough guy, the only tough guy, the tough guy running against low energy Jeb Bush, little Marco, Lion Ted, the tough guy running against all those weak presidents that we've had up to now. And now Donald Trump turns out to be the weakest president in the history of the American presidency and one of the weakest presidents in the world today. He told his voters that he would push other presidents around, around the world. He would tell the Chinese president to immediately send us back all those jobs that China stole. He would order the president of Mexico to pay for a Trump wall on the southern border. When we would point out back in the campaign to Trump voters that that was impossible, Donald Trump would not get the Mexican president to pay for that wall. Donald Trump would fail at that. The Trump voters thought, we just didn't understand how tough Donald Trump is. And the president of Mexico was going to find out just how tough Donald Trump is, and leaders around the world were going to find out how tough Donald Trump is, and America would finally be respected around the world because of how tough Donald Trump is. And now Vladimir Putin expels 755 Americans working in the American embassy in Moscow, and tough guy Donald Trump is afraid to utter a single word about it. Can it be anything else? Is there any other explanation other than fear? Donald Trump is just terrified of Vladimir Putin. No one can seriously dispute that now. Donald Trump has personally lavished praise on Vladimir Putin more than he has on any other foreign head of state. Donald Trump paid slavish attention to Vladimir Putin at the G20 summit, more attention than he paid to anyone else there, including all the other countries with much bigger, more important economies than Russia. And when Vladimir Putin expels 755 Americans from our embassy in Moscow, Donald Trump is now afraid to say a word about it. No United States president in history would remain silent in the face of expulsion of American diplomats from any country, least of all Russia. What would Donald Trump say if Mexico expelled one person from the United States embassy? One. How many tweets would Donald Trump fire off for that? The president of the United States fired off angry tweets when he got the feeling that Meryl Streep doesn't like him. And not one word when Vladimir Putin expelled 755 Americans from our embassy. Nothing explains this Trump behavior other than fear. And the question is, what is he afraid of? What is Donald Trump afraid of? What does Vladimir Putin have? that creates so much fear in Donald Trump. It can't be nuclear weapons because no previous American president has been afraid of Vladimir Putin. And Vladimir Putin had nuclear weapons then. The reason Donald Trump is afraid of Vladimir Putin is the central investigative question that the special prosecutor is studying tonight in the investigation of the Trump campaign's relationship to Russia. Is it something Vladimir Putin knows about Donald Trump and Donald Trump knows that Vladimir Putin knows it. Is that why Donald Trump is so obviously and publicly terrified of Vladimir Putin? So afraid that when he had the first major bill signing of his presidency today, President Trump did it in secret. No cameras allowed, no senators, no members of Congress allowed, no senators handed pens from the bill signing ceremony because the bill provided more sanctions on Russia. And Donald Trump was afraid of letting Vladimir Putin see him sign that on television. This is the same president who had no problem letting the world see him sign unconstitutional executive orders trying to ban Muslims from entering the United States. This is the same president who invited cameras to show him signing basically meaningless memos to his own staff that have no force of law, that mean absolutely nothing. That was worth the camera. In the Trump White House, those meaningless so-called signing ceremonies were worthy of being televised. The Trump presidency has famously been defeated in what it intended to be its first major piece of legislation, the health care bill. Donald Trump is the first president, and as long as we can remember, who failed to pass his first priority piece of legislation. And so the first major piece of legislation that the president got to sign turned out to be something that he didn't want, something that he was opposed to. It was something forced on him by the Congress, 
passed by gigantic majorities of Democrats and Republicans in both bodies, the kind of congressional vote we haven't seen in a long time. The bill did something that no sanctions bill before it felt the need to do. It included provisions to forbid the president of the United States from softening or removing the sanctions if, in the president's judgment, those sanctions are no longer necessary. In the past, Congress always gave the president the free hand to negotiate those sanctions away if the sanctioned country is willing to change the behavior that provoked the sanctions. The bill that the Congress passed and that the president was forced to sign today was a bill that, in effect, says we do not trust that this president of the United States has the interest of the United States as a top priority over the interests of Vladimir Putin and Russia. This sanctions bill is, in effect, a sanction of President Trump, Congress's way of saying, we fear that Donald Trump may be more loyal to Vladimir Putin than he is to the United States. President Trump is now clearly being bossed around by the new boss of the Trump White House, former Marine Corps General John Kelly, who has so far prevented the president from doing his customary share of utterly insane tweets. And John Kelly has obviously ordered the president to stop attacking his own attorney general. Now, you may think it a good thing that the president is now, is, is not attacking his attorney general, but we know that he wants to, but now he's afraid to because he's weak and because General Kelly ordered him not to do it. And so, in the president's obedience to his new White House chief of staff, we once again see just how weak Donald Trump is. The president has a new boss to whom he weakly submits. The Associated Press is reporting tonight that John Kelly, in one of his first acts in his new post, called Attorney General Jeff Sessions to reassure him that his position was safe despite the recent onslaught of criticism he has taken from President Donald Trump. Even before John Kelly was sworn into his new job, he called Jeff Sessions to tell him, you don't have to worry about Donald Trump anymore. I'm in charge. That was the message. The Associated Press reports, Kelly called Sessions on Saturday to stress that the White House was supportive of his work and wanted him to continue his job, according to two people familiar with the call. Kelly, who was appointed to the post the day before, described the president as still miffed at Sessions, but did not plan to fire him or hope he would resign. So the president is still miffed. But that doesn't matter. Because John Kelly isn't miss, miffed, and John Kelly is the boss now, not the president. The information about the call from John Kelly to Jeff Sessions was provided to the Associated Press by, quote, two people familiar with the call. The people demanded anonymity because they were not authorized to speak publicly about a private conversation, and that is the standard definition of leaking. So two people in the Trump administration leaked a call between the new White House Chief of Staff and the Attorney General. Those two people could actually be John Kelly and Jeff Sessions, or they could be two people that heard Jeff Sessions' end of the call, or one person on the Kelly end of the call, another one on the Sessions end of the call. There's a bunch of possibilities and combinations there. But they're all Trump administration people, and this is a leaked story from the Trump administration about the new White House Chief of Staff who was brought in to end the leaking in the White House. The leaking will never end. The utterly insane tweeting by the President has ended, at least for a couple of days. But even General John, General John Kelly cannot get the President of the United States to behave like a President when it comes to Vladimir Putin and Russia. Even General John Kelly cannot get a word out of the President of the United States about the expulsion of 755 people from the American Embassy in Moscow. And even General John Kelly could not get the President of the United States to sign the Russia sanctions legislation today with the members of Congress who passed that legislation in full view of the voters of the United States of America whose last presidential election was hacked and undermined by Vladimir Putin and whose new president, for reasons we do not yet know, seems to live in fear of Vladimir Putin.
Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.